welcome back to the show. I'm your host Mike, and I'm on the mic. Our first segment starts with some more news about Rebel Moon. Zack Snyder stated that it's not an extended cut, it's almost like a different movie. He says it's almost a different universe that the R-rated cut lives in and that he always wanted it to be rated R. He said when you realize this sort of scale and cost of a movie like this, it's not 100% responsible to have that be the demand, so they said film a PG-13 version over here and then go nuts with the other cut. The higher-up stated they don't mind. Mr. Snyder said that was a thing he had never experienced before. He said it should be great for fans, because it's the fully realized weirdo, heavy metal, bizarro land movie. Hopefully it turns out fine. Channing Tatum confirms his long-awaited movie project which is backed by Paramount called The Max that aired as part of MTV's Oddities in 93 and was his forbidden fruit. The story weaves through the convoluted lives of its main characters, Max and Julie and dances between two dimensions. The grim reality where Max is a destitute man and Julie his social worker, and the fantastical realm known as the Outback in which Max transforms into a mighty protector of Julie, who reigns as the Jungle Queen. The pivotal element of the story is the elaborate intertwining of two worlds, inviting us to reconsider our understanding of reality and imagination. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning which is now scheduled to be released on May 23, 2025, by Paramount Pictures, has undergone a title change and caused a potential continuity headache for those who have already purchased the Blu-ray as it drops the subtitle Part 1 in preparation of its release on Paramount+. Plus. Mission Impossible 7 was released in theaters as Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, but the last part of the title has now been abandoned, which could offer some clues regarding the next installment. Long before Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie brought a live-action Barbie to the big screen, Sharon Stone pitched a movie centered on the iconic doll. Stone recently revealed that, despite having the support of the head of Barbie, her idea wasn't welcomed warmly, as she was laughed out of the studio. Kevin Hart defies terrible Rotten Tomato score for Lyft, in contrast to it doing well on Netflix. Ghostbusters Afterlife brought back the original Ghostbusters after three decades in 2021, but Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is going much further. Taking its beats from the 80s the real Ghostbusters animated series, the fourth movie in the original franchise is delivering some new weird aliens, Janine as a Ghostbuster, and the return of Slimer. The highly anticipated sequel takes the original Ghostbusters back to the iconic New York City firehouse and features Slimer and the mini Stay puffed Marshmallow Man. We also have word about a reboot of the iconic 60s series The Avengers that will be produced by Studio Canal. The copyrights are ending for DC's Batman and Superman so Chris Sims is warning that you that you might be reading unauthorized stories. And lastly, James Gunn has stated that he experienced a tough writing time during the production of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 specifically finding the best ending to the trilogy. And on to our next segment. We only have two films from last week. The Beekeeper, which flopped with just $42 million so far. And the new Mean Girls film that has almost profited enough to be considered a pop with a $42 million gross. And we'll close with some films that come out next week like the Sid Hartha Nand directed Fighter which actually premieres on Thursday which is about top IAF aviators who come together in the face of imminent danger to form air dragons and focuses on their camaraderie, brotherhood and battles, internal and external. This is also Rithik Roshan and Sid Hartha Nand's third film after Bang Bang in 2012 and War while Rithik Roshan is the only actor Sid Hartha Nand has worked with three times. He has worked only twice with his other leading actors Saif Ali Khan and Ranbir Kapoor. Fighter will be distributed by Paramount Pictures which might mean Paramount Plus but hopefully they have enough theatres to show it as well but it still doesn't have many top actors so it sounds like it will flop. Miller's Girl is written and directed by Jade Halley Bartlett and is about a creative writing assignment that yields complex results between a teacher and his talented student. Starring Martin Freeman and Jenna Ortega. Looks okay but not too popular so it looks like it will flop. American Star, directed by Gonzalo Lopez Gallego stars Ian McShane who is an assassin on his final mission to kill a man but it gets delayed resulting in him becoming drawn to the island, people and a ghostly shipwreck. Sounds interesting but it will probably flop as well. Check it out. And lastly we have the Rachel Lambert directed Sometimes I Think About Dying which stars Daisy Ridley who plays Fran, who likes to think about dying. 
After making the new guy at work laugh, they end up dating where Fran discovers the only person in her way is herself. Looks interesting and is about sensitive topics which could be relatable so it looks like it will have a chance to pop. Or maybe flop. It's probably gonna flop. Those last three all come out on Friday. And that will do it for this episode. Thanks for listening and watching. Leave a comment about a favorite film you watched recently and we'll see you in the next episode. This episode is sponsored by QuickBooks. The best shortened books to help you get more read in just under 10 pages. QuickBooks is rapidly becoming the top choice for consuming books in a hurry and would like you to experience the same. Find your favorites at www.quickbooks.com and use code word really really small font for a free magnifying glass.